Hi, Jules. Yeah, Jaya. Hello, my man. Fantastic. Hey, there you are, bro. Well, welcome to the hot box. We never had you on the hot box before, and you were so close so many times. I know. So, yeah. so let me fill you in, South Africa, to who this amazing human being is. This is the man that gave up his home to us in Amsterdam last week so we could be safe and sound waiting for an aeroplane. And I will never forget the moment that Myrtle and I and you, Jair, listened to the South African president while we're sitting two meters from each other having a takeaway. Tell, tell me what's happened in Holland since, we've, since that. It seems like a hundred years ago, Jair. What's going on at the moment? What's the update? Yeah, uh, well, every day is kind of, at this moment, feels like a month. Uh, time really goes fast. Uh, sorry for my baby on the background. I'm at home. There's no work uh, possibilities anymore. So yeah, all of this is all of the lockdown. There's a lot of the people out there. The market's open, uh, and we try to make sure the healthcare kind of goes with the problem that is there, so the vaccines are coming. Holland has a pretty good healthcare system, so I kind of have to trust that we control it and COVID and, and um, people are starting to get less crazy on the food and uh, slowly people are trying to fit into the what we call the new normal. Yeah, normal. Well, normal, Jair, would be... I would, st I would still have a, a THC hangover from being one of the legends of cannabis because, of course, on Tuesday night you had invited us all to your, uh, your beautiful home on Prinsengracht for a cannabis-infused dinner and, of course, that didn't happen and that was one of the weirdest things of all because I know that was, gonna, that was a highlight of our trip. So, very so we'll, we'll get back to that. Well, it, it, I really, believe me, I really tried, but I think the world kind of fell apart around us. Um, the issue wasn't the 12 people being together at that moment. The issue was that people couldn't uh, leave Holland anymore, definitely Americans. Yeah, so, that, it, it's... Also, I have to tell you, uh, it was kind of surprised uh, when we listened together to the South African president. Uh, I've heard a lot of prime ministers telling a lot of good, uh, feel good stories. At uh, this moment, I was kind of impressed by the president of the South of South Africa and by the speech he did. Uh, it, it was like he's at least not bullshitting you guys. So um, I'm kind of jealous of that. Well, thank you for that. I, it, it, it sent a shiver down our spines because we've never ever actually heard. A president in living memory have to make us such a speech. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure your prime, I'm sure your prime minister had to make the same kind of speech, and it's quite a grave. Yeah, we, we had the same kind of speech. I think with us, it was like 50 years ago that we saw the, the, a speech like that for the last time. Um, that was in the oil crisis back in, I think, in the what is it, uh, 87 or something crazy. Okay. But, um, uh, yeah, we didn't. We, we hardly ever see that. That's definitely not normal. But uh, uh, definitely, South Africa it has uh, a big problem coming because people are living so close to each other, to each other, in certain, certain areas. That I am wondering how social distancing works in things like townships. Or um, yeah, it's kind of a scary, scary, scary thing. It's it's on the tip of everyone's tongues. We. We, we've gone from, I think in the time, certainly in the last week since the president, we've gone from memes to a bit more silence and introspection. It's hitting hard now in the, in the psyche already. Tell me, Jay, Myrtle and I walked around the day before we left, which was on, on Monday, and for the first time in living memory, there wasn't a single coffee shop open. We didn't need to, we just wanted to see for our own eyes, but since we left... Apparently they've opened again, yeah? Well, no, they, what they did is, well, you can't go to coffee shops because people are sitting together and they're, they're you know, it, it, it's very simple. If one person comes inside the coffee shop right now, um, he, he will infect everybody in a six-foot range around him. So uh, you, you can't do that. So they closed down the coffee shops and then it went pandemic because, yeah, but that cannabis isn't a essential product. 
like uh, foods and like alcohol and anything that people need on a daily basis. So uh, within 24 hours, they pretty much allowed coffee shops to open only for window seats. So people can't go in anymore. You can pretty much go to a, a window and order your weeds, get your weeds, and get the hell out. Okay, that's a really good news. At least, at least it's a solution. Well, it, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of people's medicine. People are totally reliant on this stuff, even if they haven't got a prescription. It's, it's their medicine. Jeez, imagine being holed up where you are without some weed. It just makes it even more difficult. I can tell you, I made sure, when I saw this coming, I made sure that I was stocked up. <laughs> I have some underlying health issues, so I am uh, uh, what they call a risk group. So I kind of have to isolate myself. I got problems with autoimmune diseases and uh, uh, I have to kind of like isolate myself so yeah I'm, I'm in isolation so actually I'm trying to not see anybody nobody's allowed in my house uh, this is about as social as I'm getting right now in the hot box at least I'm seeing you guys and um, um, yeah uh, Holland is kind of getting crazy I'm not sure where it goes and, uh, at least wheat prices and stock prices are not connected to each other, so at least in our industry we still make a little bit of money. Um, I'm also happy that cannabis is an essential, uh, an essential by itself, because it also makes sure that our industry is actually still moving. I mean, if you're in entertainment right now or in bars or restaurants, you're kind of screwed. Uh, at least cannabis is kind of going on. I mean, I have a company in the U.S. called LBS Distribution, and we're trying to kick ass. We're trying to manage our staff members to make sure they stay at home when they get sick, and, um, and we try to, try, try to stay afloat, because well, firing everybody is a bad, bad moment, and you're kind of responsible for your staff members that they can eat and have, have food, on the show, food for their families. And um, Yeah, it, uh, it's definitely not easy, uh, and, and I think it's not easy for a lot of business owners, but also employees right now. I know a lot of people are losing their jobs. I I, I expect, I, I know there, there are already 50,000 companies in Holland within that week and a half that are pretty much already asking the government to help out because they are about to topple over. Yeah. Everybody that lives month to month in Holland, or just all the Dutch people that live month to month, and this problem will be there in, in South Africa even more um, that, that people can't cope, they just can't. Because also you have to understand that protecting yourself also costs money. You need protective materials yeah. and hand sanitizers and, and wipes and people start price gouging on those and making it horrible, horrible, horrible to get those for a normal price. And I don't even want to know how South Africa would react on a situation like that. Well, um, it's ha it's kind of happening here as well, but um, there's been a the, the government's. We're going to talk it a bit talk about it a bit later on the show, but the government's released some um, some really punitive measures for people who mess with this whole thing. We're we're in a state of national emergency by law. They've passed a coronavirus law, and there's um, we're, there's quite a lot of um, fines and jail time for people who mess with. The, the information or they're, they're actually yeah, spreading disinformation or if you're spreading the virus and stuff so um, it's happening I, I want to yeah, tell you yeah, I know that price gouging is illegal but you see it happening right now everywhere ridiculous ridiculous yeah, well, in, 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 in America you can get a hundred dollars for a roll of toilet paper <laughs> and, and I still don't get this whole toilet paper thing why people are still running after toilet paper. Oh, I think, I think they use the toilet paper when, when the virus enters the house, they throw the toilet paper at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a... It's like their first line of defense. <laughs> there was actually a video, yeah, well, there was a video of someone in Holland actually of a, of a guy driving a, um, a forklift in Holland or one of his vehicles and was driving through the warehouse and there's just maybe 40 million rolls of toilet paper. He's just laughing at them, just saying, you well, know, you well, well, to, a, to, a, to a certain degree, it's kind of funny because Holland actually produces food for the world. And it's funny to see Dutch people hoarding food by itself. And I'm kind of did it a little bit myself also. 
Well, it's kind of funny because we have so much food production. There's nothing wrong with our food production. On the moment we hold our exports, and that's about to happen, we have more food than we have ever get food to ship So, yeah, no. yeah I... The same with us in South Africa. You know, luckily, luckily for us, we, we actually went through sanctions. I think that prepared us to be, uh, you know, on top of things in order to make sure we can supply our own goods if we were to shut off all So, I guess you know, the biggest also... What the most was, is I just heard that Kenya is actually best prepared worldwide for this corona infection. Right. Well, what I can tell you because they're used. This is because they're used to a lot of infectious diseases like Ebola and other things that are happening on and on and on and on. So they're kind of prepared for this. They have yeah, they've, they've, they've very practiced, they've, Yeah, that's it. They practice many times to deal with viral infections in rural areas that need uh, extraordinary measures in order to make sure that the virus doesn't spread out like it does in normal places. So yeah, you guys can if it gets really bad, you can go to Kenya. No, thanks for that, bro. No, that sounds really great. Jaya, we're going to leave you there. We're going to leave you with that ridiculous-looking beard that you've got on now. You look as if you've been there for 10 years. I, I need to get a razor. If, if, if I'm on the show, if I'm on the show, like, in two months from now, I will look like Santa Claus. <laughs> Jaya, please, please be safe and l lovely. Uh, look, look after your family, and we'll see you online and on the flip side, and we'll get you on the show for an update sometime soon to see how it's going in Corona Stoner Land. All right. Smoke enough weed, isolate yourself, wash your hands. See you. See you. Yeah, on the flip side. Cool. Well, what a what a story the world over. But imagine in South Africa, you know, with these uh, with those rules coming out that they're slapping the bottle stores and the shabines. They're closing down the uh, the booze in South Africa. They're actually making sure the weed stays open in Holland. It's pretty groovy. <laughs>